There's something in the air, a brand new aircraft development that has disappeared into thin air. Now getting to the point, with much of the aviation industry now focused on the issues over at Boeing and the production bottlenecks over at Airbus, a third powerful player has taken strides and is now one step closer to giving the duopoly some serious new competition. Just a week ago, this new wide-body jetliner has successfully completed its wind tunnel test, a major milestone in any new aircraft development. And this aircraft, one that has received little attention, is the CR-99, a brand new medium-sized wide-body designed to go up against the likes of Airbus and Boeing in the wide-body market, a market which both manufacturers have dominated for years. Let's have a look at what China has to bring to the market. But before we do, if you are new to the channel, a warm welcome and stay tuned for more great detailed aviation analysis and epic comparisons on the way. Also, a final quick shout out to the Airplane Productions Instagram page, the future home for all future aviation news updates. A link is in the description below, so do check it out after this whole video. Right, the CR-929, jointly developed by Comac and the UAC. It will be the newest wide-body twinjet to take to the skies. Obviously, being the newest player in the market, the two manufacturers will be able to utilize the latest technologies available to them. The CR-929 is intended to become a family of three variants, comprising of the Dash 500 with a capacity of 250 seats, the larger Dash 600 having 280 seats, and the largest Dash 700 having 320 seats. Range goes from 14,000 km for the smallest to 10,000 km for the largest, with seating for first business and economy passengers. The cabin of the CR929 measures 5.61 meters wide in diameter, providing more space than the A330neo and 787, but less than the A350. The aircraft will be powered by two next-generation high-bypass engines, likely coming with two engine choices, one for international customers from either Rolls-Royce or GE, and one for domestic markets like China and Russia, which is still under development. As of now, no engine manufacturer has been selected to power China's first wide-body airplane, though a firm engine selection could be near, after the UAC's director met with executives from Rolls-Royce and GE during the 2019 Russian Air Show. Any engine selected would need to be in the 77,000 to 88,000 pounds of thrust category, and engines already in service from these engine manufacturers include the GE NX and Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 engines, both of which fit the bill. However, given the late entry into service of the CR-99, it could be possible that CRAIC want their aircraft to be powered by a newer generation of engine. After all, Rolls-Royce is rumoured to bring the next generation ultra-fan turbofan engine in the mid-2020s. CRAIC expects the engine powering their new white body to provide at least a 10% reduction in fuel burn over today's engine, giving their white body an advantage in efficiency over competing aircraft. Similar to the new competing aircraft, more than 50% of the materials used will be composites and titanium, while the flight deck will resemble the smaller single Lao C919, and pilots will be able to transition between both easily as they will likely have similar type ratings. So far then, the CR-929 seems promising, with the first flight expected in 2025 and first deliveries planned for 2027. With a development cost of 13 to 20 billion USD, there is certainly a lot at stake here. 
and yet with the determination from both China and Russia to build this airplane to go up against the likes of Airbus and Boeing white bodies, all the numbers aren't anywhere near Boeing's successful 787 or Airbus's A330 NEO. No major airline around the world has placed any firm orders for China's new white body jet. While 200 commitments have been shown so far, CRAIC has yet to announce any airline customers, probably down to the fact that most customers are probably from their own country's market. Why isn't it selling? Well put very simply, in my view, there are three reasons. Firstly, the CR99 simply doesn't bring any new value to the market. Its performance is nearly up there with Airbus's A330neo or Boeing 787, but doesn't outperform either. Hence, there is simply no reason for international airlines to take any risks and bet in this newcomer. Which brings me on to the next reason, the cost. Yes, the acquisition costs of the CR99 may be lower than more established Boeing and Airbus offerings, given that CRAIC is sure to sell the aircraft at an attractive price to lure potential customers. But in-service support is definitely poor. Airlines operating the type should also be concerned about high maintenance costs while the reliability of this new aircraft from a new manufacturer is unproven. All of this for no real benefit in performance over Airbus's and Boeing's competing aircraft. While new engines could make the CR929 more fuel efficient, Airbus could also install the new engines on their rumoured A350neo, obsoleting the only real selling point that the CR929 had. And lastly, the CR929 is too late to the market. Many airlines that are looking for new white bodies have already bought either 787, A330neo or A350 airplanes. Hence, the remaining market for the CR99 wouldn't be very large, and similar to C919, it will come mostly from home-based customers. Still, the CR99 will hopefully go on to serve these customers well, and if it proves as reliable as Airbus and Boeing aircraft, it will certainly attract the attention of other carriers, which may be interested to see future CRAIC aircraft. As a quick note to CRAIC, the Airplane Productions heavily believes that the company shouldn't pour this much capital into an airplane to chase after the competition. Rather, they should invent an innovative airplane that has no real competition, while fitting into the needs of what airlines are looking for. To get straight to the point, I personally reckon they should come up with a smaller white body, one that fits right into the middle of the market with performances that airlines have been asking for. Such an airplane will give Boeing's delayed NMA tough competition going into the future, and only then will CRAIC garner true interest from international airlines, not least from US carriers looking to replace their aging 757 and 767. They will be taken seriously as a true threat to both Airbus and Boeing. What do you think? And do you agree with my views? Would a middle of the market airplane propel them to break into this duopoly? Comment below. Thanks for watching to the end of this detailed analysis and wishing you, as well as everyone, a truly clear sky ahead.